Here's a review I'm pretty pumped about writing because I've read a ton of reviews for Nier and none of them really reflects my feelings about the game. One of the coolest things about reviews is that everyone's experience with the game is different, even if a lot of them are similar, and with Nier I think the spectrum of player experiences is poorly represented. Most of the professional reviews reflect two or three mindsets about the game, while most of the other reviews either match those ones or are written by fans who see nothing wrong with it and gush absently about how good it is. I have my problems with Nier, but they aren't the same problems that most of the reviews I've read have had. Because of this, I think it's important that I really get into the bones of this game. Two of the most common complaints about Nier are that it's got a ton of boring fetch quests and that it's too easy. Let's look at these elements. Walking around the main towns in Nier, there are a bunch of pedestrians with little words over their heads signifying that they have a quest for you. Most of them are indeed collection quests or transport quests that involve a little running around, and a few of them send you to go kill the occasional monster. These are all very easy quests, and it's easy to take as many as you can and finish them all together. I agree with most reviewers that these little quests are tedious and boring, which is why I didn't do them. After making a run through a bunch of them towards the beginning of the game, which actually did some good for getting me into the world at that point, I decided not to bother since the game was always sending me between mainline missions anyway. Maybe someone actually enjoys these quests. When you're out in the field doing them, your characters will share little unique bits of dialogue that you might enjoy if you really like the game's writing, as seems to be the case for most of its fans. They don't even take long to finish. One of my favorite things about this game is that Nier runs like a fucking gazelle, very satisfyingly traversing wide open plains in a matter of minutes. And not only that, but one of the early quests gives you a giant boar mount, which waits for you outside of whichever town you're in, and can charge across the plains in seconds. I feel like all of the reviews which accuse the game of sending you all over the place on quests are missing the forest for the trees by neglecting to mention how easy it is to get around. My point is that there's a reason to think that someone might enjoy these quests, so their presence in the game doesn't seem unwarranted to me, and since you don't have to do them in the first place, I can't see any need to complain about them. Moreover, my decision to skip all of the quests killed two birds with one stone. Since I never did quests, I was always broke and couldn't afford to stock myself up with items and weapon upgrades and shit. I also didn't get the leveling boost that would have come from fighting enemies out in the fields along the way. Therefore, I played the game underleveled, relying only on the regenerative items which I found in fields and dungeons, and this made the game challenging. Albeit, there were still a number of parts where the game was crazy easy. The first two dungeons gave me no trouble, especially because they kept giving me a ton of medicinal herbs along the way. The game thoughtfully makes it so you can only carry ten of these at a time, which meant I couldn't stockade them, so once the game started providing them less regularly, it became much more challenging. There were parts throughout the game where I soared through, but there were also more than enough tough parts where I died continually, almost to the point where I thought I was going to need to reload my save. I never did though, and always overcame the challenge just by mastering it, which is how to have fun playing video games in the first place. The other big complaint about this game is that it looks pretty dated and ugly. That word dated is one I don't like to use because I think it's a mistake to have it imply that something looks bad. Do you mean it looks dated like Fantasy Star Online, which I now find hard to play because it's so ugly, or do you mean it looks dated like Valkyrie Profile, which came out in 1999 and still looks great today? Yes, Nier looks dated, though I'd say it looks more like an early Xbox 360 title than like a PS2 title, which some reviews accuse it of. And yes, there are also parts of Nier that are ugly, and it's worth pulling apart there. Nier himself is an ugly dude, but he was also designed that way. He's 40 years old and battle-hardened. He ain't meant to be pretty. His design is altogether less than attractive or sensible, but I think it works for him. What doesn't work, though, is how when he climbs a ladder, one rung at a time, his fingers don't bend, which looks incredibly fucking awkward. Nier's attacks and magic animations look fine, if not noticeable. What doesn't look fine is when, in a cutscene, Nier is using the sword that I've given him, but one of his hands is holding onto thin air because he's supposed to be holding a sword with a much longer hilt. My point here is that the game straddles a line between looking good and bad, and saying that it's just one or the other doesn't get into the heart of the matter. Yes, Nier's environments aren't high in detail, but I think they look awesome because of the game's strong sense of visual design. Sure, that town built onto the cliffsides may be all gray, but look how cool it is! It's like that part in Resident Evil 4, only huge. Okay, there's not much in the field, but it's a huge field full of adventure. I actually kind of prefer that the fields are barren if the detail wouldn't have looked good. In Xenoblade Chronicles, seeing all that tall grass only pushed it in my face how all of it had a rough pixel outline, which took me out of the excitement that should come from seeing a huge awesome world. I also think it's backwards to condemn this for looking dated, when it's essentially the same design sense as Hyrule Field in Ocarina of Time, which is still regarded as one of the most engrossing worlds in video games. Nier is definitely a graphical step above the N64, and if the reasoning is that Ocarina was only impressive for its 
its time, then it shouldn't be at the top of every best of list today. Sadly, Nier's world isn't nearly as engrossing as that of Ocarina of Time, because in actuality, it isn't very big. When you start out in the central town, you find out how there's three exits, each of which leads into a big-ass field, and it's like, wow, this could lead anywhere. And the first few places you go to are all just across the first field, so it's like, man, there must be a ton of places in this game. But then it becomes apparent as you go on that those are THE three fields. Each of them connects the main city to a handful of other areas, but those areas don't lead to other big fields. Figuring this out was a bit of a letdown, especially because by the halfway point in the game, you've already been everywhere, and it's super easy to travel between story missions if you aren't doing quests. After the halfway point, you unlock the ability to go most places by quick boat rides, and if you take the fields, your aforementioned boar will get you everywhere in a jiffy. It's not that Nier isn't a relatively big game, nor is it that being engrossed in the world is besides the point of the game. Nier offers a lot of agency to the player to make the game about whatever they want it to be about. You can treat it like an open world game and spend a bunch of time doing quests, hanging out in the fields, looking for items, etc., but you don't have to. You can go to the mines and grind your heart out for raw materials to craft your weapons, but you don't have to. There's a really terrible fishing minigame and a farming minigame that I guess you can try if Nier is like your all-time favorite game and you're obsessively trying to get 100% on it or something. I mean, I can't say it's any worse than figure collecting in the Minish Cap. If you think an RPG should push you to level, buy items, and be prepared before stepping into a dungeon, then play the game on hard mode. If you're like me and you get a thrill out of going in totally unprepared and trying to fight the odds, then you probably should still play on hard mode unless you're like me and don't know how to use the guard button. At this point, it probably sounds as though I really like Nier, but the truth is that I'm lukewarm about it. Lots of the reviews that gave this game scores in the 6 to 8 range claim that it's got a lot of great ideas and a lot of bad ideas, but I'm not really sure what they mean, and I don't think they're sure either. There are no ideas in Nier that I thought were great. Nothing in this game made me think, wow, there's a lot of lost potential here, because the foundation of the game is only okay at best. To understand what kind of ideas Nier actually has, we must try to figure out what the developers of this game were thinking when they made it. Did they go into it trying to make a strong action game and fail? Probably not. Nier's combat isn't deep or thoughtful, but it works, and to me anyway, is fun. It's not satisfying the way combat in Devil May Cry or God of War is, but mindless fun the way combat in most action RPGs is. This is how I know that Nier wasn't really intended to be an action game. I've seen reviews that actually compare this game to the likes of God of War, but I think that doing so is kind of missing the point. Only one core element of Nier stands out enough to speak as the game's mission statement and that's variety. The most noteworthy, most original, most this is why this game exists element of Nier is its constant insistence on variety. My problem with this game more than anything else is that I think it fails to shine in the one way that mattered, which was in making variety fun. Now if you think there's a good probability that you'll play this game, then I recommend that you pause the video, go into the description, and click on the skip forward link. I say this because Nier is a game that's full of surprises, and I think that there's probably a lot more impact to these surprises if you don't know about them already. I had already heard about most of the weird parts in the game from reviews and recommendations that got me to play it, and I wished that I hadn't. So again, if you think it's likely that you'll play this game, then skip to the point linked in the description to continue the review. The first few hours of Nier give the impression of a very straightforward action RPG. Between the quests, which send you around the fields killing monsters and collecting items, and the first dungeon, which is all just combat with the occasional block pushing, I would have expected the game to consist of gradually harder monsters and puzzles like any other action RPG. The first quirks that appear are all based around camera positioning. In the first dungeon, there are rooms where the camera will go to a top-down perspective while you fight or push blocks around. In the second dungeon slash town, there's a long part where you move around on a two-dimensional plane and it acts like a 2D platformer. These were fun little bits that helped to break up the monotony of combat, and I thought they worked really well. The third dungeon is probably the most standard RPG fare, consisting of mostly narrow passageways. In this dungeon, you start to see a lot more of the game's Danmaku enemies. Nier is rife with enemies and bosses that shoot pattern projectiles at you, to the point that it's a defining feature of the game, and I think it's handled pretty well. The bullets are almost always easy as hell to dodge or block, so again, the point isn't to have a strong bullet hell mechanic, but just to have more variety in the standard combat. It's beyond this point that things get weird and where the game starts to waver between parts that I enjoyed and parts that I hated. This is where the reviewers get their genius ideas and terrible ideas spiel, and it's probably also where a lot of fans got hooked for love of the game's eccentricities. Dungeon number 4 is the one I easily hated the most in the game, and to really do this experience justice, I'm just going to tell the whole story unscripted. So it starts off, you show up in this desert town called Facade, and you have this new chick with you, Kaine, and she just waits outside. Apparently she saved this girl from this town beforehand, but she's like, like, antisocial, so she stays outside the town, and you go in. And the town is designed like this big M.C. Escher drawing, there's like staircases everywhere and shit, and you're like, oh, we have to go to where? The, the King's Place, which is on the opposite side of the, uh, of the map. So you start running up and down all these, uh, fucking stairways and shit, 
And then Nier and the book Grimoire Vice, he's like the main uh, character who talks to Nier. They they are going on this banter and they're like, oh, who designed this place? This place is so dumb. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make me feel better about you know running through this piece of shit. And then I finally get to the place where the king lives, and it's like, oh, you can't see the king, you have to go back. So I'm like, fuck, I have to walk all the way back across town to the entrance and see what Kaine has to say. So then there's this little girl, and she's, like, carrying groceries or whatever, and she falls over, and I pick her up in her groceries and shit, and she's a mute. And Grimoire Vice is like, oh, well, she speaks in the language of hand, so it's much easier for me to comprehend than this weird language that everyone in town's been speaking. I forgot to mention, we couldn't understand what anyone in town was saying because they speak another language. So... We start talking to this little girl and she's like, oh, our town has like a million rules and I have to teach you these rules and show you around town so that you can fucking communicate with people. So she takes us down and there's like this ride we do where it's like this, it's kind of like a magic carpet thing on sand and it, it takes you around to all the different places around town. So you have to follow this little girl and she runs really fucking slow. So you have to like slow walk behind her throughout the town and she takes you to each place and she keeps telling you all these rules and facts and shit and I'm just like, I have no idea what this has to do with anything it was annoying and then after like three of those the game just suddenly asks do you want to take the rest of her tour or do you want to just you know continue with the fucking game and i'm like of course i don't want to do the rest of her tour i don't even know the point i'm pretty sure the point of this was that it's um you have to do this to talk to each of the shop owners because along the way grimoire vice picks up the language and then you can talk to everybody in town afterwards i never found a reason to come back here uh, I didn't buy any items before I went to the next dungeon. I got through the next dungeon, and then I never fucking went back to facade until the end of the game when I had to again. So, after I follow this girl all over town, then we finally get to the king's mansion. And like, oh, the king's been dead for a little while, but the prince is alive, and he's apparently just now just disappeared into this fucking dungeon. And everybody's like, fuck, we have to go get the prince, but there's our rules simultaneously tell us that we have to find the prince and that we're not allowed to step into the dungeon unless we are the prince and shit. So everybody's freaking out about their rules and stuff. Well, then they're like, oh, well, why don't we go? Because we're outsiders. So Nier offers to go. So by now, I mean, I've spent like 20 minutes just running back and forth across this town before we finally get the fucking mission. And I'm like, all right, whatever, let's just do this. But then the little girl's like, oh, in order to get through the sandstorm, you're going to need me to lead you. So I have to actually follow this fucking girl out through the desert overworld area and she is still running slow as fuck and we run out for it's like a full two minutes of running before you actually get to the sandstorm no enemies attacking that time then when you're running through the sandstorm you get attacked by wolves and it's just like a few of them and they were easy as shit to kill and it's like stay close to her and i'm like whatever it's not difficult so then we get to the temple finally i don't have to follow the girl anymore but the temple is literally all puzzles and it's just you go into a room and there's a puzzle and basically each room has a rule where there's something you are not allowed to do like maybe this room has no physical attacks or this room has no magic or this room has no jumping and each time you have to get through the room without getting hit by the little bullet hell projectiles and you have to destroy a certain number of these glowing boxes to unlock the next room and these puzzles were fucking they all varied between dumb and just annoying as shit it would either be oh, I have to walk through and push two blocks and I'll get to the fucking exit, which is stupidly easy. Or it would just be, like, insanely frustrating. There was one room where you have to use magic and you have to break, like, ten different boxes. So basically the way you do it is you run around the room shooting magic balls at these boxes, but the boxes take a few hits to destroy and your magic takes forever to regenerate. And there are no magic regenerating items in the game. So most of the time spent in the room, which was something like ten minutes that I spent just standing in this room waiting for my magic to recharge so I could shoot the fucking blocks. It wasn't even hard. It was just annoying. And then there was another room where you have to walk slow to get through... This one took me so fucking many tries. I almost... Uh, so the thing is, when you get hit by the, bu by the bullets and have to restart the room, then you lose a little bit of life. So, in this room alone, I got hit so many times that I had to use, like, all my healing items. So, by the time I got to the fucking boss, I had nothing to heal with and, like, half health. So, the boss took me forever to fucking kill because I was so low on health and healing potions and it was just a fucking hassle. I was, I actually stopped playing for the night after that dungeon and I thought I was, like, I, was, I wasn't I was sure if I was going to continue the game. But once I finally beat the boss, the rest of the game wasn't frustrating. So, it was just that one dungeon that really just 
Fuck! After the desert is the most frequently noted dungeon in the game, The Forest of Myth, in which the game becomes a text adventure written in the style of a visual or light novel. This is the part that I think you might find neat if you didn't know it was coming, but I'd already heard about it, so the novelty wasn't really there, and it all just felt rather pointless. The text adventure is pretty short, and the only interactive part is answering a couple of very easy riddles, each of which only has two options for answers. It wasn't exactly a spectacular scene unfolding in the text, and it was over in no time. There are two people in The Forest of Myth who give non-mandatory little text adventures, and if you complete them you get a weapon from the first guy, but only the second one has a real fail potential, and when I did indeed get a game over on it, I just didn't bother trying again and left. The next dungeon is a mansion that's in black and white, and which you must explore through fixed camera angles. This has been called a parody of Resident Evil, which it probably is, and earlier there was also a very direct parody of The Legend of Zelda, so parody is in this game's blood. But it reminded me more of Capcom's other hit, Devil May Cry, which also featured fixed camera angles and a much more similar combat. Like the text adventure dungeon, this one ended up being very unobtrusive and easy in there just to be in there. I've actually heard a few people had trouble with this because you had to find uh, items and then you know use them on certain doors and shit but I had no problem with it. Next there's a huge series of epic boss battles which I won't spoil in this review and the game reaches its halfway point which includes a time skip and suddenly giving you two new classes of weaponry. When you play Nier on New Game Plus it starts you off at this point which makes sense for another of reasons that will soon become clear. After the time skip you go back to the haunted mansion and go into its basement which is my favorite of the unique dungeons. This one features an isometric perspective, and feels a lot like a gauntlet style game. I usually hate isometric perspective, but Nier lets you move the camera freely, and the controls seem to work naturally with the perspective, so all is well. This ended up being the most challenging dungeon for me, with tons of fighting and sparse items, and for whatever reason I passively enjoyed it. Then things get kind of weird. You may recall me saying that by the halfway point you'll already have seen the entire world of Nier. So where does the rest of the game play out? in the same place as you've already been to. In all fairness, some of these dungeons have new paths to explore, which you might remember having been closed off when you came before. I don't think there's anything wrong with sending you on new paths through old dungeons, but I do need to mention that the first dungeon is the exact same fucking thing the second time through. Maybe the block pushing parts were different, I'm not sure, but otherwise, you follow the same path, and the only difference is that the enemies are stronger this time. Even the boss is the same. Of all the dungeons they could have sent me to twice, why did they pick the most boring one? After that dungeon, you can do the others in seemingly any order. The Forest of Myth tells a better story the second time around, although it's another one that's so tangentially related to the plot that it seems pointless. The second dungeon slash town is the same as before, but this time you have to fight this crazy ass gauntlet of like a hundred enemies, and if you die you start over, which became an infuriating when I actually died twice and rage quit for the night. It was at this point when I finally sold the metric fuck ton of items that I'd collected throughout the game, became insanely rich, and could afford to always have tons of healing potions, so I skated through the rest of the game. Oddly enough, the post time skip part of the game is much shorter than the opening part, with a lot more focus on fighting. You never return to the annoying desert temple, thankfully, and there are a lot more giant enemy hordes. If I've made Nier sound boring and repetitive up to this point, you might be wondering what drove me to play it through to the end, considering my whole extreme non-completionist rant from episode 2. Thing is, there's one area where Nier does truly shine, and that's in the boss fight. There are a ton of bosses in Nier, each of which is unique, challenging, and fun. These bosses are giant and take a really long time to kill, and are every bit as fun as the famous bosses from God of War. Plus, there's way more of them than in that game. Sadly, the final gauntlet of bosses isn't as epic as many of the ones that came before it, but I was satisfied with what I got. Okay, we've come a long way now, so take a breather. We've still got a ways to go. Alright, I'm ready. Remember earlier in the video when I was taking apart the criticisms levied at this game by other reviewers and disagreeing with them? Well, there are also a number of things that most reviewers liked about this game which I thought sucked. The big huge one is the voice acting, which I've seen praised enough that I started wondering if I had crazy high standards for voice acting or if everyone else just has crazy low ones. Nier is a JRPG dubbed in English with no Japanese voice option, and like every other dubbed JRPG that isn't called Xenoblade Chronicles, the dub is, to be generous, poor. It's not a shit pile the way dubs like East Ark of Nepishtim and Musashi Samurai Legend are, but it's on the level of bad where Persona and the Tales games and the best anime dubs reside. These are a tier below the average native dub, two tiers below the average Japanese dub, and nowhere even close to what I would refer to as good voice acting, which is reserved for the likes of Dark Souls and Psychonauts. Every time you start up near, before the main menu appears, you're greeted by a disembodied voiceover from Kaine, which I will now perform for you. Vice! 
You dumbass! You better start making sense, you rotten book, or you're gonna be sorry! Maybe I'll rip out your pages one by one, or maybe I'll put you in the goddamn furnace! How can someone with such a big, smart brain be hypnotized like a little bitch, huh? Oh, Shadow Lord, I love you, Shadow Lord! Come over here and give Vice a big sloppy kiss, Shadow Lord! Now pull your head out of your goddamn ass and start fucking helping us! You always manage to hear... Vice! You dumbass! before you can skip it. And every time, it just reminded me how much I dislike Kayane's voice. She sounds like she's trying way too hard to be rough and swear a lot, but she's not good at swearing and it sounds all wooden and awkward. She actually sounds fine when she's being aloof, which she is half the time, and the swearing seems to flow more naturally into her speech, but when she's angry and yelling, it just sounds silly. Kaine and Nier are actually the main characters whose voices bothered me the least. Nier is totally unremarkable and has a number of weird moments where his inflection or tone doesn't really match what he's saying or with what what he just said beforehand, but it's okay. Grimoire Vice, who is a book by the way, has this droll English accent that is horrid and he spends most of the game bitching about anything and everything in a long, slow grumble. Vice has a ton of banter with Nier, which actually does a lot in helping to endear you to the characters, however there were a number of parts wherein Vice and Nier would just complain about how contrived and annoying parts of the game were, which only served to drill into my head how contrived and annoying those parts were. You're supposed to convince me that I'm doing all this boring shit for a reason, not remind me how stupid it is. Rounding out the main cast is the kid, Emil, who sounds like he's crying at all times. His whiny voice is by far the most detracting and it's a real shame because he got a lot of big moments in the story and I spent each of them distracted by how terrible his voice was. These are all of the main characters and I tolerated their voices just enough to watch the cutscenes. When the dialogue was reliant on my pressing A to continue, I would read each line and then cut them off mid-dialogue so that I wouldn't have to listen to them the whole time. The small supporting cast isn't any better or worse, but the minor NPC voices are fucking atrocious. I wouldn't expect anything better from a JRPG dub, but there are times when it really detracts from the experience. Remember that 100 enemy gauntlet I mentioned before? The whole time you're fighting, there are all these NPCs yelling shit from their houses, and they say the same 10 or so shitty phrases over and over again constantly. My initial rage quit when I died at that part was more due to having to hear all the fucking NPCs than it was due to dying. Remaining on the audio front, Nier has been praised a lot for its music, and the music is honestly pretty good. I like the songs that were used in the big open fields, and a few of the big dramatic songs were striking, if not memorable. As I've said before, I don't tend to get into video game soundtracks, but for those who do, Nier has a lot to offer. But I can't let it completely off the hook. The first two dungeons in Nier had songs that were flat out atrocious as dungeon exploring tunes. The first dungeon song is a 40 second loop of just operatic vocals which was so heavy handedly dramatic that I couldn't stand it and in no way got me pumped about all the fighting I was doing. It was like having the Stelio Canto song from American Dad playing nonstop for 40 minutes, 10 of which you spend pushing blocks. At first I thought this was going to end up being a big criticism since both of the first two dungeons music bothered me so much but it evened out after that. Even when I went back to those dungeons, they stood out as the most annoying music in the game. So here we are, nearing the end of this review, and I still haven't mentioned the one thing that everyone really loves about this game, the thing that drew in enough players that it's become something of a cult favorite in the past two years. The story. Going into Nier, I was aware of the fact that the game has multiple endings, and I had no intention of seeing them all. I've never liked the idea of multiple endings and branching story paths, because there's never been a game that made me care enough to actually replay it again and again to see them all. It's rare enough for me to even touch a game after I've beaten it, because by that point I'm usually ready to move on to the next game. If I do care about a game enough to play a lot of it, I'd rather that I could do everything before the end of the game instead of having to replay my way through it. But as it turns out, Nier is kinda like that. Your first time through the game, there's only one possible ending to get. To get the second, third, and fourth endings, you have to play New Game Plus, and after the fourth ending, the game will actually complete your save, meaning you're done. I have not started playing on New Game Plus, nor do I intend to do so immediately. However, this is a system that I've really got no problem with, especially because New Game Plus starts you off at the game's halfway point. Considering that I finished Nier in under 15 hours, and considering that the plot is supposedly significantly different between each playthrough, it seems like New Game Plus would actually be quite interesting in this game. The reason I'm talking about all this is because a number of people have told me that the story only really picks up and becomes interesting in New Game Plus. It's hard for me to imagine this being the case though because I cared so little about the story and the characters to begin with. Don't get me wrong, I don't think they're bad at all, and I did find find myself getting attached to the band of misfits by the end of the game, but I was ready to just finish the story and be done with it, and the idea of replaying the same 7 hours that I just played through only for more of these characters in this story didn't appeal to me. Most of the dialogue in Nier falls into these three setups. Number 1. I have to protect you. No, it's too dangerous, you don't have to. Number 2. It doesn't matter, I have to kill them all to save Yona. And number 3. You can count on us, we're your friends. 
I don't dislike messages about friendship and self-sacrifice, but this is how 80% of the dialogue in Nier goes. All these characters ever do is talk about how much they need to protect others and how much others don't need to worry about me, I'll be fine. The other 20% of the dialogue is snarky quips about how obtuse the design of the desert place is, etc. And while Nier has a definite sense of humor about it, the game is so completely and thoroughly soaked in pathos that it gets ridiculous early on and goes beyond the impossible by the end. Every single fucking character has a sob story. Every Everyone's a woeful victim, and everyone's moody as hell. There are staggering numbers of cutscenes about people dying and their loved ones crying about it. Most of these are impossible to care about because I barely even know these people, and they have no real impact on the plot, and even when they do, I still just don't care about the plot in the first place because it is itself the incredibly moody tale of a guy who's an engine of self-sacrifice doing everything to cure and or save his sick daughter. Yeah, there's a lot of little world-building bits with mysteries surrounding who the characters really are and the truth about the world, etc but all of them are very cliche and predictable and I just didn't care. So yes, a part of me is curious about the other endings, because if it's really true that there's a lot more to the story and it gets a lot better, then I might actually find something to care about. On the other hand, the game's done such a poor job of making me care about it up to this point that I don't feel the drive to continue. So here's the thing. I won't play the alternate endings immediately, because there's other games that I want to play. But since I own this game anyway, I'll come back to it at some point, and I'll rewrite this review with a new ending, which I'll call Near Plus. For the time being, that's all I have to say about Near. All in all, I did enjoy this game and I do think that I can recommend it to others, especially those who aren't as nitpicky as I am. Nier is hard to come by new, but you can find it used for very cheap and it's probably available from Gamefly, so go ahead and give it a shot. If there's another action RPG that you'd like me to talk about on this show, then give your recommendation in the comments. If you enjoyed the video or have something to say, I love reading comments and I love seeing likes and subscribes. See you next time!